to colleagues and who would be trained in their ideology. Be that as it may, the, the publication itself was designed as something that would appear more or less simultaneously with the 1908 Kunstschau or art exhibition. When uh, the crown prince saw Kokoschka's paintings and spoke about the painter, he says, this man deserves to have every bone in his body broken. And that was the attitude, not only of the Habsburgs, but also of many of the more knowledgeable people in Vienna. Trimond and Knaben as a book, I think, is, is an interesting example of the somewhat precarious finances of the Wiener Werkstatt, uh, and also the way in which the Wiener Werkstatt was really willing to go out on a limb to support young artists in whom it believed. Uh, in Vienna, the, uh, one should say that the visual, the uh, music and uh, literature, opera, etc., were always uh, cultivated and uh, were an important part of the cultural life of the city, whereas the visual arts were treated as a stepchild. When he, and for that matter his uh, contemporaries, started to uh, show their creative results in the Vienna of the first decade, they were far from admired. Uh, they were what the Viennese called a Bürgerschreck, a shock to the bourgeoisie. There was a small elite, of course, that appreciated him. There was, first of all, Adolf Loos, the architect, who took Kokoschka under his wing, so to speak, and promoted him. But it was really Adolf Loos who pointed out to him that there was a contradiction between what he was doing and whom he was doing it for, that is the Wiener Werkstätte. And it was Loos who really said, you know, you can't go on this way. Uh, there, there's a, a moral compromise involved here, and you must make a choice. And of course, Kokoschka made the choice to leave the Wiener Werkstätte and go with Loos and become a, a real fine artist and not an applied artist. If an artist is you, and if an artist is avant-garde and path-making, then he's different from what they are used to, and that's why it takes longer. The more popular artists, the artists that are more easily understood, are more easily successful and sooner successful than the others who are the more sophisticated. And Kokoschka is, of anything, a sophisticated path-making artist. Detroit and Knob, in the title of the book, means the dreaming boys or the dreaming youths. And the book itself is generally considered to be one of the first, if not the first, pieces of expressionist literature. The text, which Kokoschka wrote, is in some ways as revolutionary as the drawings. In fact, I would almost say that the text and the text in combination of, with the drawings is what makes the book interesting. It's a very, very bizarre, almost stream of consciousness tale about emerging sexuality and adolescence using a lot of a very bizarre and mythical imagery and allegory to make its point. Kokoschka dedicated the book to Gustav Klimt the leading artist of the time. The tradition of the illustrated book is very much a tradition of children's books and fairy tales. The Wiener Werkstätte, with its love of Gesamtkunstwerk, had a program of doing very beautifully designed books. And it was natural that one would attempt something in the vein of fantasy. It was Kokoschka's innovation, in a sense, that he did a children's book not for children, which is what the would-be commercial publisher wanted, but a children's book for adults. Being trained in an applied arts environment to do works in the graphic arts, posters and postcards and that sort of thing, he was very adept at dealing with the different flat planes of color in a way that an artist with an academic training probably would not have thought to do. And the combination 
of again reintroducing the human figure and at the same time presenting it in such a stylized and graphic way had implications for the, the birth of expressionism which I think Kokoschka was one of the first and in some ways one of the only ones of these artists to grasp. He realized that if one abstracted and exaggerated the human figure, you could have something with a great deal of expressive power, that it didn't need to just be decorative, which is what the things that the Wiener Werkstätte published had been up until now. And in that, he had a, a vision that went way beyond. This uh, painting, Portrait of Frau Hirsch, it's a painting that Kokoschka did in 1908, and uh, nobody else painted that way at that time. And that's what makes the art unique. He was a path maker. Her name is uh, Mrs. Hirsch, H-I-R-S-C-H. She was the wife of a banker, and was, uh, he, Kokoschka was commissioned to do her portrait. It used to be the, in the first ever catalog of Edith Hoffman, it used to be number one. So she thought that this was the earliest portrait that Kokoschka ever had painted. In the meantime, uh, research has discovered that there were several other paintings done prior to this time, but all about the same time. So this is one of the first maybe ten paintings that Kokoschka ever painted. Why would a banker show so much interest in uh, uh, this kind of art that was so daring in well, thank God, sometimes there are people who are more daring and some people that belong to, if you'll excuse the expression, to a certain elite. When people speak about the portraits of Kokoschka, they often talk about his power of analyzing the sitter. He looks beneath the skin. Don't forget this was in Vienna at the time of Sigmund Freud. Sigmund Freud started with his uh, interpretation of the dreams at the turn of the century. This was done a few years later at the same period. In one respect, his portraits of, of people are the existential portraits, the, the portrait of, of the sitter and his, his, his inner life against a blank background. It's as almost if he's, if he's got the person pinned down, fixed. Said, Tell us how your grandfather knew Kokoschka in Vienna. Well, essentially, there, my grandfather was very eccentric. And I would suppose that eccentric men uh, attract eccentric men. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, in this circle of people that, that were in Vienna at the time, uh, among them was Adolf Loos, uh, one of the, our first modern architects. And uh, my grandfather had a lot of insight and uh, helped, uh, benefited a lot of these, these people, mm -hmm. including Adolf Loos. And Adolf Loos discovered Kokoschka and introduced Kokoschka to my grandfather. Kokoschka was able to express a neurosis, if you like, we now associate with the particular society of Vienna. He then turned his attention, via Lois, to painting portraits of the, the, the actors, musicians, writers, thinkers, artists of that society. Really, the portrait occupies a central position in Kokoschka's art in these early years, the, the, just before and during the First World War. The sitter in this painting is Paul Sherbart. Paul Sherbart was a writer and one of the German expressionists. He was a favorite subject for Kokoschka. There are several drawings existing and also, I think, an etching that Kokoschka did of this man. He must have been a very outstanding person. He is, uh, few people know that uh, expressionism is not only uh, a form of art in the visual arts, but also in literature as well as in music. Sherbert was one of the literary expressionists, musicians,